When you buy an iPhone, you're not just buying a phone. You're buying one of the most secure phones ever. And out of the box, these things are extremely safe. But amidst the Apple versus FBI court case with personal privacy at the very center, I wanna show you how to make the already safe iPhone even more secure than ever before. Let's start off easy. The sole most important way to secure your iPhone is of course by using a passcode. But I can't tell you how many people I still see that don't have their devices locked, whether they don't feel like entering their passcode every time or using Touch ID. This is the stepping stone to making a secure device. If you don't have a passcode on your lock screen, then you're basically saying, here's an iPhone and here's all my data, enjoy. In iOS 9, Apple changed the recommended passcode length to six instead of four digits. But if we want the most secure password ever, then we're going to wanna to choose the custom alphanumeric code. Here we can add numbers, letters, and even symbols to make one of the most secure passwords ever. This one practically has infinite possibilities and would be extremely hard to crack. And if you have a newer device with a fingerprint sensor, I would highly recommend enabling Touch ID as well. Not only is it fun, easy, and fast to actually get into your device, but replicating a fingerprint is quite the challenge. Once we're done with these above options, below make sure required passcode is always set to immediately and never allow access when locked to the Today View, Notifications View, Siri, Reply With Message, or Wallet. That gives someone that much more of a chance to enter your device or use some weird workaround to get into your data. And if we turn all of these options off, it basically reduces the risk to almost zero. Now for the average person like you or me, turning on the erase data option below, which says it's gonna erase all the data on this iPhone after 10 failed passcode attempts, can be kind of scary because we have videos and photos and memories that we don't wanna lose on here. But if you have top level info that cannot get out no matter what, you'll want to turn erase data on because whoever's trying to get into your data won't even know that on their 10 failed passcode attempt, whatever they were searching for will just have vanished. All right, so enough about passcodes, let's move on to iCloud because this is super important as well. If you go to that preference panel and then tap on your name at the very top, you'll see an option under password and security called setup two-factor authentication. This is hands down one of the most important services you can use for your Google account, for your iCloud account, or any account that offers it. Because once it's set up, in order to log into your iCloud account, even if the person who's trying to hack your account has your password, they will need your physical iPhone or another device with your phone number linked to it. They'll send you an SMS with a specific code that you have to enter to log in. Two-factor authentication makes it so you almost don't have to worry about your iCloud account ever getting broken into. Also with iCloud, you're going to want to turn iCloud backups off. Here's why. If law enforcement provides the proper documentation, Apple has the ability to quite easily decrypt iCloud backups, meaning that if you have personal data stored and backed up via iCloud, if law enforcement gives the right documents, Apple will say, oh, here you go, this is Sam's backup for March 23rd at, let's say, 7.05 p.m., and then there's all my data in the hands of the government. If you're not comfortable with that, then don't worry. Just back up your device exclusively through iTunes and encrypt the backup there. That means that your backup data will only be available on the hard drive of whatever computer it's backed up to, thus making it quite more secure. Concluding our iCloud section, there's one last option that you should always, always have turned on, and that's Find My iPhone. Let's say that somebody stole your phone and they were trying to get your data, or maybe they just wanted to flip it and sell it for their own profit. With Find My iPhone enabled, not only can you track that device and see where it's actually located in the world, but more importantly, if somebody tries to reactivate that phone after it's restored, they will need your iCloud password to enable that device. And in turn, you are once again dramatically improving the security of your iPhone. With all these tips being said, there's a few more I'd like to share. Like if you use a credit card or a debit card and it's compatible with Apple Pay, you should use it. Because when you use Apple Pay, you're using a different number to buy things with. You're not using your credit card number, you're using an on-device Apple Pay number, which is way more secure than anything else I've ever used. Also, keep an eye under your privacy settings, especially location services. You can take a look at every single app that is currently requesting your location or has requested it in the past. And if you wanna see whenever your location is being tracked, tap on system services and scroll down to the bottom and enable the location services status bar icon. 
Now, if you add up all these tips and any more that you'd like to share down below in the comments, you have the most secure iPhone ever. And if somebody breaks into this device, they are one talented individual. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you did or you learned something new, feel free to drop it a like, and more importantly, share it with somebody else who needs to make their iPhone more secure. And for more content related to iOS, make sure you hit that subscribe button because that is all we talk about here on my channel. This has been Sam. I hope you guys have a great day, and I'll talk to you in the next video.